Judith, let's perhaps start off with you. We're putting the focus on rare earth commodities right now. What exactly are we looking at when we're talking rare earths? Because the name alludes to the fact that we're looking at a scarce com commodity. Okay. Um, the rare earths are a family of chemical elements, um, and there's 15 of them in the family. And um, they uh, actually have two other elements, um, scandium and yttrium, to make 17 elements collectively called the rare earths. Now, as you've said, they're not um, all that rare. In fact, they are um, uh, more abundant in the surface of the earth than things like tin, silver, gold, platinum. And in fact, even the least um, abundant of these is 200 times more abundant uh, than gold. So. Um, they are difficult, more difficult to mine, mm -hmm. um, and, but they are slightly wrongly named. They're not that rare. Okay, so now that we've got that cleared, let's take a look at why we're interested in rare earths in the first place, Paul. Well, essentially, rare earths are dominated by Chinese supply. China produces approximately 97% of rare earths at the moment. And so countries like the West, in particular Europe and the USA, are slightly concerned about this, particularly because the Chinese reduced exports of rare earths in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Rare earths are now becoming increasingly important in modern technological applications, particularly in hybrid car technology and also in wind turbines and various other high-tech applications. And so with increased hybridization, with increased environmental consciousness, increased use of wind turbines, demand is forecasted to increase, particularly um, for heavy rare earths, in approximately 11 to 15 percent up till 20 15. Where does this then put other producers on the globe, uh, uh, Judith? Because, I mean, Paul's highlighted that we've got China uh, pulling back on the export of its uh, rare earths, and that would imply that we're seeing some strain in uh, the supply chain of the, these metals. Okay. Um, yes, and that has um, put up the price. Um, but in the past, until um, China dominated the world market in the 1990s, um, Rare earths were produced from um, a mountain pass in California and they were produced from uh, mineral sands but they were also produced in South Africa and then as China took over and um, undercut prices from other producers mm -hmm. they obviously dominated the market. So there are um, uh, projects which are coming back on stream the one that I've mentioned, Mountain Pass in California and uh, Mount Weld in um, Australia. And they have um, a production planned for uh, somewhere around about 2013. So there are other places, including in Africa and in yeah. South Africa, that can um, go towards producing some of the uh, required rare earths. Paul, if we put Africa in the spotlight here, what supply potential do we boast? There are two significant projects in South Africa, Sandkops Drift and Steenkamp's Kraal, both in the Northern Cape. Um, Steenkamp's Kraal was in fact a rare earth element mine in the past, and it's now being re-evaluated, re-explored and redeveloped, um, with the assistance essentially of, in fact, some Chinese company in the processing side of things, um, whereas the Frontier Minerals project at Sandkops Drift may have a South Korean consortium involved in processing and te technology transfer. Mm -hmm. For any rare earth element deposit, the mineralogy tends to be particularly different, and it actually takes quite a long lead time to actually get a viable processing option for a particular deposit. Steenkamp's Kraal has an advantage in that it was a previous rare earth element mine, so the processing stream should be pretty well known. Elsewhere in Africa, there are projects in Zambia, Tanzania, Mozambique, Malawi in particular, um, with various companies undertaking exploration on actively at the moment and also for the last couple of years. Um, and it is difficult to actually say when any of these will become producing mines um, because of the difficulty in processing yeah. The particular minerals involved. So that's the scenario that we face right now. Let's lay, take a look at impact on pricing because you mentioned with uh, China pulling back on supply to the rest of the world we've seen prices escalate but as we've got these supply streams coming on board how do you see this uh, pricing dynamic shifting? Okay well um uh, what I should have mentioned earlier was that the, the rare earths are divided into um, two groups 
And um, there's a group called the light rare earths, which are the ones which are most abundant and most in demand. There's also the heavy rare earths. So the, um, this is, um, uh, has an effect on the pricing. The, pr the light rare earths are much less valuable than the heavy rare mm -hmm. earths. So they are currently the light rare earths in the range of um, 100 to uh, 300 US dollars a kilo. And um, it's probably projected that these will fall to between 60 and 100 instead of 100 to 300. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the heavy rare earths, they're currently between 300 and 5,000 uh, dollars a kilo. And projected um, prices are around about 2,000 to 2,500 going forward. But going forward, as Paul has said, there is going to be um, the output from uh, Australia, mm -hmm. from uh, the US. But that's going to be dominated by light rare earths. So as we go forward towards 2015 and beyond, there is possibly going to be a shortage in the heavy rare earths. And that is obviously um, going to um, affect the price. Well, 